Fifth grade, lesson 56, and this is on multiplying by three-digit numbers that include zero. So it takes it up just a notch, okay? So I want you to write down this problem, okay? 243 times, and this time we're going to do 102, okay? Now, this lesson specifically is going to be covering what this is right here, okay? Okay. So, do you want to work it the the three different ways, or you want to work it one step? I say one. Let's try one. You want to try one? Yeah. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. Three times two is six. Remember, we're gonna start with the two, and we're gonna do this one first, six. then this one, and then this one. Okay. Two times three is six. six. Two times four is uh, eight. And two times two is four. Very good. Okay. Done with that one. Okay. Now. Okay. Because we're working with a zero next, okay, remember your answers always go underneath it. Remember that? But uh -huh. when you're working with zero, anything times zero is going to be what? Zero. Zero. So guess what you can do? You can just enter in zeros <laughs> because that's what your answer is going to be. Yeah. Okay? So you really don't even have to work it. So my first zero would have gone here, and I would have went zero, zero, and zero. And then we would have just filled in that zero. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you can just write, I mean, you literally can write 100 zeros. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can write four, you can write whatever, but the answer is always going to be zero on that spot. Okay? And some people don't even write anything, and they just keep moving forward to the next one because they know that that's going to be worth nothing. Okay, but the reason why I encourage this next step is because that way you know when you're working with this one, you're going to put it under this number. Yeah. See what I'm saying? <clears throat> okay. So now we're done with that one. Now let's do one. One times three is three. Can put your answer here. Can I put three zeros there? You do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Three. Then okay. one times four is four. Uh -huh. And you just keep moving to the left, just like math always works. And, and then, then one, one times, times two, two is two. two. Then you're going to put a line underneath it. Can I fill in zeros? Can I fill in everything else with zeros? Help you? Okay. okay. Now we work the problem. Six. Eight, seven, four, two. and two. And because it's math, you're going to move from right to left. And we're going to go three spa spaces and put our comma. Okay. So you would have, should have gotten 24,786. I did. Good job. Okay. So that's what we're going to be working with now. All right. So that's how you want to work it. Um, now, let's, get, let's do this other problem. Three dollars. 25 cents. Do I write this? Mm -hmm. Times 120. Now, do you see this zero right here? Yes. What can I do if the zero's at the end? Do I put a decimal under it on the 120? Nope, it doesn't have one. This is basically saying like, let's say I bought um, a pair of socks uh -huh. for $3.25 and I bought 120 of them. 20 of them. Okay. So that's yeah. what it's saying, kind of like. Mm -hmm. So you don't always have to have decimals in both problems. Okay. Okay? So, <clears throat> remember in math, the decimals are always at the end if it doesn't show a decimal. Okay. Okay? Yeah. But we don't need it in this problem, okay? Now, what do I do with that zero? Do you remember when you have an ending zero, what you can do with it? Uh, hanging. Yeah, so we can hang it. So I'm going to take this and move it. This is 120. I'm going to put my zero to hang off the edge. Okay? You remember what we can do with that zero? Can we put a zero under the three where the one was? You can, yeah. Okay. Okay? <laughs> so what can I do with this zero that's hanging? Um, just slide it down. Drop it down. Yeah, just slide it down. Okay? Now let's work the problem like normal. Okay, we're going to start with this two. Okay. And go two times five is... 10, carry the 1, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 more is 5, and then 2 times 3 is 6. That's what you should have gotten on the first step. Okay. Okay? Now, we're done with the 2. I'm going to put an X on it. We're done with it. Now yeah. we're going to move to this 1. Okay? And remember, when you're working with this one, you're going to put the answer underneath it. Remember, that's where it starts. Okay. So let's do that. 1 times 5 is? 5. Uh-huh. 
one, oh, remember we needed to erase these? Yeah, okay. I did. One times two is two. Two. And one times three is three. three. Fill in zeros. And then you, yep, fill in the rest of it up with zeros. And then because we're working with this zero that you like to put in there, you can put more zeros at the bottom to work this, but there's no need to. Okay. <clears throat> so now we're going to work it. Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. <laughs> five plus five is ten. Carry the one, six, seven, eight, nine, and three. Now, because this is a decimal problem, see that decimal right there? Mm -hmm. Do you remember what to do in math when you have a decimal? I think you count it. Yep, count how many spaces there are after. And how many are there? Two. So, math, remember you go from right to left, so you're going to go <coughs> two spots okay. and put a decimal. So, how much would a pair of socks, if you bought 120 of them, cost? $390. $390. For 120 pairs of socks. <laughs> okay, so that would be the answer. You feel like you understand how to do it? Yeah. Okay. That's lesson 56.